Hello and welcome. You're watching Tech24. In this edition, we'll look at how technology can help improve the world's finest wines, from thermal cameras and drones to solar-powered robots. Grape harvesters are going high-tech. Plus, our in-house expert Dan and Jay Cattlecar is on set to tell us more about a drone that's been helping lifeguards save swimmers in distress on the French coast throughout the summer. But first, the new iPhone feature is a design that's very similar to last year's iPhone 6S with a rounded aluminum body. But what's entirely new is the phone's water resistance, which means you can get the iPhone 7 wet without worry. And we're going to start this show by testing with our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar, if the iPhone 7 is indeed water resistant. It's not waterproof, it's water resistant. That's right. But before I talk about iPhone 7's water resistance, the other feature that this phone uh, boasts of is it doesn't have a headphone jack anymore. So all the music, all the sound, you, you have to listen. You have to listen using Bluetooth with uh, wireless uh, headphones. Anyway, so going back to its, uh, to its water latest feature. So we'll try a little demonstration. I'll put this iPhone 7 in a jar of water. And my producer, Kami, will call me. Let's see how it works. So this, uh, fo uh, this phone uh, boasts of the so-called IP67 uh, certification. Now, IP means it's in grace. Kemi is calling you indeed. That's right. As you can see, the phone is working in this uh, jar of fresh water. So IP67, as I was talking about, it stands for ingress protection against dust and water. So the, the figures 67, they indicate the level of protection or the level of resistance against uh, dust and water, respectively. Now, 6 is the highest level of uh, resistance against dust, which is present in this phone. But 7 is two rungs below the highest uh, uh, level of resistance against uh, water. Now, what this means is that the iPhone 7 can be safely submerged in uh, water of one meter th that has to be fresh water it can remain submerged for 30 minutes but if it is submerged in salty water or of, or if you take it with you for swimming or for diving and if it falls unfortunately in the toilet uh, bowl then uh, it, there could be uh, it could it could get damaged so that's the latest feature that uh, iphone 7 boasts so of course it's, it's doing a lot of catching up because there are other phones that already have this particular feature like the uh, the Samsung S7 Edge and S7, which boasts, which has IP68, so it has one level above, above. Uh, the, above iPhone, the 7. iPhone 7. But we can tell our viewers we've tried it on Tech24. The iPhone 7 is indeed water resistant. We're going to move to a whole other story here in France. It's grape picking season, and while the practice may be one of the country's oldest traditions, new technology is transforming the way things are done. Clément Bonneau has this story. From a fine fruity rosé to a delicious dark red, behind every glass of wine lie hectares of vineyards ready to be bottled. Hundreds of years of tradition and now also avant-garde technology. On this particular farm, a drone can be seen flying overhead to record the temperatures of the grapes. It's a program flight that follows a predetermined flight path to cover the entire plot of land. We really go into the vines to study the crops. Four hectares of land can be monitored by this thermal camera in less than an hour. The healthiest vines shown up in green, those that are less healthy are shown in red, and it even shows where water struggles to flow. So here we had big problems with water retention because actually the ground rose. At this point a mound had formed and thanks to the drone we made this part level again and we solved the water flow problem. More and more accurate images have also transformed the way grapes are picked in France's greatest wine estates. At this prestigious property near Bordeaux, the chateau's technical director can be seen roaming non-stop, tablet in hand. We have around four hectares, and to the eye it all looks the same. But when we look at satellite images, we see huge differences in colors. So we have dark green, light green, yellow, orange, red and blue. These colors make all the difference for grape picking, as Fabien shows with two grapes that appear identical. Uh, this grape comes from the green zone just here, and this grape comes from the red zone just next to it. So the two areas are separated by just a few meters. So for me, there's a two or three day difference in maturity. 
Thanks to the satellite images, the grapes will be picked separately, leading to a better wine. Technology can also revolutionize work on the vineyards after all the grapes are picked. In winter, vines can be pruned using this solar-powered robot. The eye of the tool is here and the pictures are sent to the tablet and interpreted by the tablet. We see that right now it's identified a branch. It's an autonomous robot, 100% autonomous, that moves on its own. Other tools allow a farmer to automatically weed the most difficult to reach plots of land. Thanks to this, I'm hoping to use less herbicides and less insecticides, that we can continue to work in a traditional way. The first examples of these machines will be up and running this winter. At 25,000 euros each, around 30 have already been sold. And speaking about wine, Dan and Jay Cattlecar is going to tell us more about a machine that received a prize at this year's CES in Las Vegas. It's a system similar to the famous Nespresso machine, but this time it's not for coffee, it's for wine. That's right. It essentially is a smart brewing system. So what it does is uh, you need to have these special bottles, which are of 10 centiliter uh, capacity. Now, this comes, uh, the, the machine comes with these bottles, of, or you can purchase them separately. Each bottle has a different uh, form of wine. Now I'm having a rosé. Uh, now each bottle comes equipped with an RFID tag. So what this machine does is it recognizes this RFID tag, which in turn corresponds to a particular type of wine. So here it's rosé. So I put this bottle inside the machine. I press it. And as you can see, now inside what the machine does is it starts treating this wine. So by recognizing the type of wine that's present in the bottle, right. it either heats it up or it cools it down. It also lends more oxygen to it. So the aeration process also takes, on, takes place simultaneously along with, uh, along with uh, the uh, temperature treatment. So this is the, the, uh, the idea behind this machine. So the idea is that once this uh, particular form of wine gets treated, it tastes better, it has more oxygen, and it, it, in general, more than the original wine, it adds more value. Right, and as you can see, the wine is being poured in the glass. It's a beautiful rosé wine, and the glass looks chilled. Yeah, it does. It does feel quite cold. Now, it can be a daunting task to find the right bottle of wine when you're at the supermarket. I usually go with the label, but I think you also have a great tool to help us choose the right bottle. That's right. There's a simple application called Vivino, which you can use using your smartphone. Now, all you need to do is scan the label of the wine. By doing that, you get all the relevant information, and then you choose accordingly. Now, you have a variety of uh, wines that can be identified through this app. Around 500,000 wines can be identified, which is which is a great uh, advantage. Uh, all, all, what else you can do? So what you can do is you can also rate the wine, which will help other users to decide whether to buy that wine or not. Now, all this scanning process can be done in about 10 seconds, so which is very quick, very snappy, and it's a great tool for uh, choosing the best wine that you can, you know, which is available in the market. And it's already used by 11 million users, so that's also a great advantage. Thank you so much, Dan. We're going to move on now to Test24. And it's been helping lifeguards save lives on French beaches in the country's southwest all summer. I'm talking about the helper drone that we have here on the set of Tech 24. Dan, this drone allows lifeguards to drop a self inflating boy next to, at least in proximity, uh, to the victim in danger. That's right, Julia. Just to add to what you said, this particular boy also comes equipped with an oxygen source so the victim can breathe oxygen. Now, this drone comes uh, equipped with a thermal camera. It also comes equipped with uh, uh, a communication system so the user can talk directly with the person who is in distress. Now, there is this, this is one of the major uses. The other use, which has been uh, extensively tried by the French oil giant Total, is uh, on uh, offshore platforms. So what this drone is used for is to identify uh, ships that might be approaching the uh, platforms. How it does is by using uh, either a joystick or an, uh, or, or an application, it is able to uh, pilot the drone and it can approach that ship. It can drop a walkie-talkie uh, it, it, by dropping the walkie-talkie and with its inherent or with its inbuilt uh, communication system, the user can talk to the person on the ship and identify whether it's a friendly ship or whether it's a ship lost at sea or whether they could be uh, pirates as well. And since this drone comes 
with cameras, it will be easier for the operators to identify the kind of ship that is approaching the platforms. Right. And uh, we've been wondering about when the, you know, when the first uh, airport for drones will be built. And we actually have the answer to that question now. It's going to be in Africa and more specifically in Rwanda. That's right. The transportation is a big challenge in Rwanda because of its uh, because of its terrain. Now, uh, an architectural firm has proposed a drone port, which will enable uh, the setting up of uh, this this uh, network of drones that will be able to deliver goods, whether it's emergency medical supplies, whether it's electronic goods or other necessities uh, which are required all over the country. Now, this is of course the first step. If this succeeds, then there could be 40 other drone ports in the country. The project is expected to commence uh, next year, and it should be in operation by 2020. Very well. And more and more people are also using drones to simply capture beautiful footage. And now there's even a social network called Dronestagram. We'll leave you with some of the most stunning shots. Thanks for watching, and do stay tuned to France 24.